We come to California because you're from everywhere. Montreal is here. Toronto's here. Did I hear Philadelphia? New York? Well, we're, we're so glad you're here. No one is from Burbank. You are? Oh, great. People really do live in Burbank, California. Well, guess who's here? We are pleased to uh, say hello to you from Southern California, those of you watching us around the country. Well, it's only nine years old. They're doing something right. Is there, uh, is there anybody in America who isn't somewhat concerned about what may happen to the stars of Knott's Landing? Whose babies are those, anyway? Uh, and who's marrying who? And d the guy is divorced from her. She's trying on her wedding dress. He used to be her husband, and he gives her kisses and wishes her good luck. We should all be this civil. I am pleased to present the following stars of one of the most successful primetime soaps in the history of our business. It happens to be titled Knott's Landing, and here is just one of its stars, Michelle Lee. Come in here. Oh. And also here is Kevin Johnson. Hello, Kevin. Come on in here, Kevin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Van Ark. <laughs> and here is the always popular, highly regarded Ted Shackelford. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Donna Mills. Oh. And we'll be back with the stars of Knott's Landing in just a moment. Just, uh, I've said that we're here from Brewery. Take a picture of the door. Stay there, guys. Don't leave. It's all right. Brian, look at this. Look at this. Have, there's, a, there's as big a crowd outside as there is inside. Now they're shy. Look at this. You are gorgeous, with two exceptions. <laughs> what else? Um, I don't need this abuse. I'm on a hit show. <laughs> this is, uh, you sure are on a hit show. Uh, well, you are, uh, you've done something right. Nine seasons. You started in 1979, and here you go. I mean, is there anybody going to be pregnant again in your series? <laughs> not uh, enough. Now, the twins are whose? His? Hey, mine? <laughs> I don't oh know. Oh, my God. I'll tell you, she is told it? me. No. <laughs> no, they, yes, I think they are. Well, he was married to me, by the way. <laughs> yes. What can and I, I tell you? Yes. She what? Yeah, you, I had him first? She, who had him first? Oh, she had, you mean uh, Kevin first? Yes, no, she had... Van I Van had Van Gary Van first. Van yes, you're Van right. What good. Oh, and right. You win. You win. Yay! <laughs> oh, but we... I've been watching, oh, I've been watching yeah. a long time. You've been watching. You <laughs> like this. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. But they don't... People don't really behave this way in real life. Oh, yes, they do. They do. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I've lived long enough to know that they do. Oh, right. Yes, indeed. Uh, and if you're in a small town, you know what's going on. Oh, and that's even better. Yeah. 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 Well, I never thought I'd see this kind of thing on the, the sex, and you don't know who's the father, and these people are... I, huh? I wonder what they're thinking. I wonder that myself. Yeah, I really it's do. It's true to life. What is it? It's that? true to life. I believe this goes on. It's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> all we can do... All we can do is pray for America. Yes. Um, this is probably tame to what really goes on. Yeah. But you do look like you're enjoying it, and I assume that this is fun. Now, uh, uh, nine years, is, this is the all-time record. I don't know anybody who's gone more than this. 1979 was your first uh, show. You mean on a soap opera? Uh-huh. Dallas, Dallas is one more year. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's uh -huh. a big brother. I liked his version of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you looked up, and all of you have credits which are considerable and attractive in other places, but this is obviously the one that uh, now, uh, it also allows you to do other things, so you're not totally married to, to this. And how many episodes do you do a year? 30, usually. We've done 30 uh, uh, for, for the last three years. Uh -huh. 
where other shows only do 22. And you had the ultimate actor's joy of being given free reign by your own producers to actually uh, improvise uh, your 200th script. Is oh. that, or your 100th script. Is that no, so? 200th. 200th. 200th and 201st. Yeah. Say that three times. <laughs> yes. sure. You did that. Actually, you, you all went over uh, to uh, your director's house. David, David, Jacobs. David Jacobs, our producer, we went to his house for two days, two full days, in character. Without we were body mic'd. Yeah, body mic'd, and they had video cameras that not that sort of followed us around wherever we went. We had to stay in character. We couldn't, we couldn't take a phone call out of character. We couldn't go to the bathroom out of character. And then we had to take our mics off when we did go to the bathroom. Where else oh, I kept mine on. I let him know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it worked, apparently. Now, they took your improvisation and they... Uh, they listened to all, I don't know how many hours, uh, of all the tapes. And then from that, they compiled... Uh, what they needed to uh, to project uh, the the new uh, scripts, two scripts. Yes. But the feeling of the show itself when it was aired was it, it, it was very it was highly improvisational. It felt like it was, although it wasn't. It was scripted. Yeah, it was a little strange for us because we'd already lived it once. We'd already done it. <laughs> yeah. you know, and we were doing it again. But what a uh, what a wonderful opportunity for an industry that's not famous for giving actors anything to do in terms of their own initiative. Yes, ma'am. I seem to remember Mr. Shackelford from uh, a recent, or a still going on soap opera, Another World, is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. How yes. many of the others on the panel came from soap operas, <laughs> daytime? <laughs> yeah. where, where you had a regular job on it, you mean? I mean yeah. When I, when I started, I did, uh, I did everything. I did, uh, it was a soap called The Doctors, and I was their resident anything. I was a cop, <laughs> a shrink. I was the anesthesiologist. I, I did a number of things there. All under fives. Under fives is a term where you, it's a, a contract situation where you're only hired to do under five lines. And anything above that, between that and 20 lines, is a different pay scale. And so it goes. Until now. <laughs> now I write it. And, um, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, you don't have to stand. <laughs> Okay. Um, I've never heard about this improvisational um, deal where you, you um, showcase whatever you wanted to, yes. to present. It, I'm wondering, is this something that's going to be like an episode where you was. created? It already was. Oh, which yeah. one was? I watch Laura's it all the time. Death. They were lamenting Laura's death. Oh, oh I saw that. It was great. Yes. You liked yes, it. Thank Good. You. And you didn't realize that. The, yes. Donna, you look great in red. Thank you. I've read that you insist on doing all your own makeup. Is that true? Yes, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've put out a makeup video, a how-to makeup video, so I can't very well have anybody else do my makeup. <laughs> I would like to know what Michelle Lee does to stay looking so great. Oh, is that nice? <laughs> Thank you so much. Please, Joe. I, um, I, I, I uh, stay this way because I get to do a lot of love scenes with Kevin Dobson. <laughs> And no, I just exercise uh, the way you have to, you know. <laughs> the donuts probably help. <laughs> oh, Donna, will you stop? <laughs> She's on me today. Uh, Kevin, you're a New Yorker. Yes, sir. Don't Proud forget it. it. Always. Yeah, Jackson Heights. Queens, Jackson Heights, yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, we lived, uh, it was the second house off the runway at LaGuardia. <laughs> <laughs> Serious? We lived in that situation for about a year and a half. Uh-huh. Uh, is this just a large Irish family? or Seven of us. Seven. Now they're uh, well, with, with the nieces and nephews, grandchildren. My father has I lost my mom four years ago. Right, so we have uh, my father has 22 grandchildren, two great grandchildren. Well, how proud they must be of their big shot brother, the uncle, uh, the TV star. Yeah, well, that's very nice. But we're equally as proud of each other. We have educators, PR people, and a great family, and everybody's doing well. Uh huh. Was it your wife that encouraged you to do this? Yeah, I was punching tickets on the Long Island Railroad trying to get build up some money to go back to school after I'd finished the army mm -hmm. and uh, it was Susan's brother who got into this modeling stuff and she thought that I could do that also so it took about a year for me to uh, admit to saying okay I'll take some pictures and one thing led to another and I would are. do some extra work on whatever movie it was if I was on a bus going by a location I put that on my resume <laughs> uh, and then I would go into I would go into a casting director and I would say I did a cameo in love story <laughs> You did a cameo? Yeah. You know, they cut it out, you know. Yes. Uh, I didn't know that story. Uh, Ted, you're an Oklahoman. Yes. Tulsa. Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma. Well, t uh, Tulsa is um, 
Uh, you're certainly not the first uh, star from Tulsa, but uh, it, Tulsa is not famous, is it? For, uh, <laughs> it's not it's famous, famous for anything. Oil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened? Did uh, you, you obviously uh, you were serious about your performing, and you've done some. Uh, who did? One of the women did Cyrano. I did. Yes. Was it well, you? I wasn't Cyrano. It's no. <laughs> was it? but were you Roxanne? I was Roxanne, yes. Yeah. I'll bet you Roxanne. were Roxanne. Yes. For Richard uh, Chamberlain, Cyrano, actually. Ted, just, uh, yeah. well. Nice. <laughs> uh, what happened? Did uh, someone left. find you? You left Tulsa. <laughs> and you came, you came right here? No, I left. Um, I went away to school, and then I uh, went to New York, and then I came from New York to here about 11 years ago. And then I'm here. And we're glad. I'm glad you're glad. <laughs> you lovely ladies are so prim and petite. Donna, what size dress do you wear? <laughs> a four. <laughs> and oh, it's disgusting to me, too. <laughs> uh, and, Joan, it says here that you ran in the Boston Marathon in 1979. That's true? That and, is absolutely true. And yes. did you finish? Oh, of course. I've done 12 marathons. Thank you. I've done uh, 12 marathons and I've finished every one of them. Yeah. You have to finish. You got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, not everybody does. No, I... they don't. Jo Joanne Woodward didn't in the movie she did, but that's not right. You got to <laughs> finish. You have to go the whole. I won't ask you your time. Maybe that's not fair. Or maybe in you're Boston. Proud? Yeah. I'm kind of yeah. proud of it because my qualifying time was 3:26 and I did a 3:37 and it took me 10 minutes to walk over the starting line. So when you deduct that 10 minutes, I did about a, I did under a 3:30. So I'm very proud of that. How do you mean 10 minutes to walk over the starting line? There are so many runners. There were almost 10,000 runners that year that we literally walked. When the starting gun goes off, there's such a backup. Oh, I see. That, that we literally Getting walked. Started. If there are any runners, uh, who uh -huh. people who have marathoned here, they know that's true, that when there's a big race, you usually walk uh -huh. over the starting line. When you say qualifying, 326. You have to qualify for Boston. That's why I love it. It's uh, the creme de la creme of the marathons, I feel, because right. you can't just... Uh, enlist right. or enroll and run. That is race. a tremendous achievement. Now, as you must know, the, the woman's record is not much more than an hour. It was two, nine or ten, I believe. It's For right women? in there. Right in there. Ten. I, I don't really know what I'm it is not now, sure. but I'm it's not close. Sure it's, it's around at least a two, ten to fifteen. Right. And you obviously, you're obviously doing something to take care of yourself today. Are you well, running? I run. Oh, yeah, I do. Run from my house to the studio, uh -huh. MGM studio. <laughs> well, what, what, is it, what would be your average? Six miles a day? Five, probably, five. now, five hills. And oh. I do hills now, because uh -huh. we moved to... And you to do it because what? It makes you feel good. I do it mostly now. It used to be, uh, it was a sort of a weight maintenance thing, but now I do it because it's my time away from everybody and everything, no eye makeup, no nothing, put the hair right up in a ponytail like pebbles or something, and just <laughs> go out and just be out in the air and... and Ask, you know, no second right. takes, no telephones. And your fellow uh, women... They're just gorgeous, naturally. They don't and have I hate to them. do that. I just hate them, that's it. Yeah, they don't have to do anything. <laughs> We're in Burbank with uh, the... What? With the... What is it? I'd like to know how much time you have off a year for your families. For what? Your families. How, what's shooting time? From what to what? Ten and a half months. We shoot ten and a half months out of the year. To do 30 shows, you have to shoot that long. Uh -huh. We don't have much time off. We want to share with uh, this audience some of the uh, recent scenes of Knott's Landing. We'll also give you a chance to ask your own questions. We're in Burbank at NBC with the cast of Knott's Landing, and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Who was in Kojak? Can you remember? Who was Kevin Dobson. <laughs> yeah. Remember his name? No, I don't. Detective Crocker. Right. Crocker. Okay. Crocker. I'd like to ask Kevin, how did you like working with Telly Savalas? It was an education. <laughs> <laughs> Why, pray tell? tell no, it was, it was great. You know, being that close to it, you know, he became one of the major mega stars of, uh, of that era and one of the most recognized people throughout the world. And there I was, just one step to the right and one behind watching him, you know, watching it happen. <laughs> and I was the happiest guy in the world being there. Yeah, um, Kevin's been involved with, with the Abby, well, with Donna and with Joan no, Boat. What? No, I know, I'm sorry, Gary with Donna and Joan <laughs> Boat. Well, I'm going to ask Kevin also, and Kevin's been involved with Michelle. How do you keep from becoming romantically involved with, with the women? We, we do get romantically involved. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's acting. It's, it's part of the craft, and it's, you know, these, these scenes... <laughs> <laughs> I love what she does that. <laughs> well, you know, those scenes, 
things that you see us do in bed are very, you've heard this probably before, but it's true, it's, they're very difficult to do because not only do you have a crew there, but usually because we're prone, we're all prone when we're doing those scenes, you know, we're prone, and consequently, the camera, which is usually a little low, it happens to be looking up your nose. <laughs> it's very difficult to stay romantic when you're trying to get in a position. I never position. found that problem. <laughs> Please tell me about this. In other words, in the reclined position, you have, the camera has a hard time flattering well, you, Madame. Yeah. Is that it? Well, you know what? Should I tell you something? <laughs> it is, it is true that they watch out for the women because you, you happen to, you have to get into positions that are attractive. Now, if your head is in the wrong position, you, what are you looking at me? You, you, you have, you have, uh, you have to worry about double dangerous. chins if you're, if your head is too low. You've got to worry about... If there's you know, more of your face on the pillow than pillow, then you're in trouble. <laughs> She's got it. That's it. Where your hair is lying on, you know, yeah. your, under your nose or on the pillow or, you know. Uh -huh. Hey, guys, imagine putting up with this hmm? stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, who was with... Yes, no, forget it. When you go home, it's, it's anything else. I want to know, how close are your real personalities to what you portray? I mean, are you as nice and are, are you as evil? Donna's, Donna's, a, Donna's bitch. a bitch. Yeah, Donna's <laughs> a bitch. <laughs> We're all exactly the opposite of the characters. <laughs> I would ask Joan, um, I saw the episodes where... I think you had amnesia. <laughs> yeah. Which time? You were wonderful. I thought that would have been a really difficult part to do, was it? Well, uh, playing a, uh, uh, what, an amnesia victim, uh, I go home and can't remember who I am. No, <laughs> I had more, I had more fun at that time, and uh, I don't know, that was a very special bunch of, group of episodes, and I thank you, because it really was exciting for me to do. And I you're, got away from these people, which was wonderful. <laughs> you're not married in the show, to, to, are you? Or no, no, I'm not married, no. You've been married to Valine and... And... Abby. 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 That's why you put What? <laughs> He married twice, so he was so quiet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to have a question here. You know, sure. the life... <laughs> uh, the life of entertainers and, and movie stars, you know, they appear to be so gorgeous in public, you know, free from any stress and strain. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so he, what is the truth behind it? I like to know. Well, how do you, how no do you stress. think they look? They look good. Well, they look, they look free from stress. They're all smiling and yeah. nothing but only smiles. Yeah, it's like know? a beauty contest. <laughs> How, how old do you think they are? Oh, they are pretty young. <laughs> are you starting this film? Don't you? You're getting at it! You're getting at it! Twenty-nine. Yeah, around that. Thank you very much. Thank him very much. Okay. I forgot his question now. <laughs> he said something about stress. Yeah, some, yeah while... There's no strain. Yeah, well, the reason I'm saying here, you look, you know, you look as if you are free from stress and strain, but what is the truth behind it? The truth is that in the makeup trailer, there's a lot of stress, because with all these ladies <laughs> trying to fight for the mirror, that tends stress. to be stressful. We, we have our own families and our own lives, and uh, we, we come to work with our own problems. Sometimes we share them with each other, and uh, uh, it's like any other life. I do want to show you Joan at work. This is... Uh... Joan at work? The, right. This is her. This is uh, this is the 100th show. Is this the one? 200. 200th. I don't know why I'm stuck on a century here. 200. This is a nine-year show. Think about it. This is quite an achievement. Uh, and here you are on the occasion of uh, we're, you're all lamenting Laura's passing, and I don't. You are upset, my dear. Is you, this when Karen tried to make yeah. my coffee? Yeah. 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 This is quite a piece of work here. Really, you uh, you'll like it. I, I mean, will. Oh, you're wonderful I don't in think here. So. I watch. You're mad as hell. Watch this. Knots Landing. Well, Karen, I'm not helpless. I know that. But you don't act like you know that. You act like you think I'm not capable of anything. Well, no matter what you think, I am capable. Well, I for one... Shut up, Mac. You're the only one who thinks you're being cute. Val, You I think I'm incapable? I got news for you, Karen. I can make the coffee as well as you can, and I can live my life as well as you can. Or don't you want to admit there are other strong people like you in the world? You want to be the only one? No. Well, then why didn't you tell me Laura was dying? Why? <sighs> because she asked me not to. But I had a right to know. She was my friend, too. There were things that I had to say to her. How would she have ever known if you would have told me? Because you don't have to tell secrets, Val. Everything you know is written all over your face. People can see for miles. Did you oh, tell Mac? Did you answer me, Karen? Did you tell Mac? Yes. And you did tell somebody else, even though Laura asked you not to. Yes, I 
husband. And I'm your friend. And I was Laura's friend. No, it wasn't it what was she wanted. wanted. It was what you wanted. Laura didn't want Mac to know, but you told him. You decided not to tell me because you think Val can't handle it. You all think that Valian can't handle it. Well, I'm here to tell you I can. Nobody. Karen, you talk to me when you're ready to talk to me as an equal. Otherwise, you don't talk to me at all. Yeah. No, my little niece, Kendall, said, my sister's little girl said, you know, you should have let Karen make the coffee. You should have let her yes. make the coffee. Michelle, <laughs> you'll just have to bear up for this one more time. Is it a troublesome thing being with the, the blondes? Or... <laughs> does, it, does it matter? Do they have more fun? No. She's, that's... Are, you, are you really asking me yeah, this question? Yeah, I mean, you know, does it... She's saying no. She's saying no. no. She's, she's not, either not allowing me to answer the question, <laughs> or um, do they have more fun? Well, I don't know if they have more fun on the set, but probably better being the only brunette. I think so too. <laughs> That's just what I would say. Hi. Um, do any of you have family members who watch the show? No. 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 The we family. Them watch the show. Are you kidding? Of course they do. My son sneaks in every once in a while. He wants to see Olivia. <laughs> Because I was wondering if you ever feel the need to justify your actions. Like, this isn't really the way mommy is, having affairs or this or that. Well, my son's 18, so it's hard for me to <laughs> <laughs> Well, my husband never watches. He says that's what keeps the marriage together. Because he, he's a news reporter on NBC, as a matter of fact. Yes, he, he is. is. Yes, he is. Good old Channel 4 is John Marshall. Marshall. Yes, exactly. Um, and he never, ever watches the show, so he doesn't know what people are talking about when they come up to me and say, What yeah, a good-looking couple you are. You must really set the rest, the whole restaurant a buzz when you guys make... I don't think You so. probably, you jog in with your... No, he, a lot of them think it's Wayne Rogers or I've come in with James Caan or something like that because of the curly blonde hair. Yes. My question is, why did Laura leave the show? Or was she written off? Who wants to take this? She's written off. She's written off. It was a budget uh, thing. <laughs> They're they, dead. They caught a lot of people because of money. I th I read that. That's actually the answer, isn't it? Yes, it is. Ted's very honest. Can you imagine? You start to see yourself cough in the script, and uh... <laughs> or you take a helicopter ride. You know. Yeah. Bus rides are really dangerous. Or you don't answer. <laughs> or you don't answer your phone. I mean, that must hurt. <laughs> uh, so budget was the uh, issue. Yeah. Now, may we ask you, um, uh, in this new age of uh, fierce competition, etc. After your nine years, uh, what's the story? Are you challenged? Is this your biggest challenge in terms of your ratings? Is everything smoothy groovy? How about lead in and lead out? Are you happy? And how long is this going to go? And does it, etc.? I think this is one of these shows that can go for <clears throat> a very long time, and I think the network feels that it can. Um, we're opposite. Mm -hmm. L.A. Law right now, which is a very big hot show, but we keep we maintain our ratings and keep them. We knocked off uh, Hill Street Blues, which is a very big hot show. We were opposite them for years, and now they're off the air, and I think we'll do the same to L.A. Law. The uh -huh. other thing also is that, as you said, lead-ins and lead-outs, um, the competition um, has uh, a very strong lead-in. That means the show prior to it, it has very high rating, and it actually comes down from it as some of their audience starts watching CBS. Right. We start with a, a 20 share show lead in. Right. So we come up from there. It's very difficult to do right. when we do it. Now you must have, you must just devour the scripts when they come to you, do oh, you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and obviously, <laughs> uh, the Laura, Laura's dead. Laura's dead and here she is on videotape. Uh, uh, tear your heart out. We didn't yeah, want to see tough. that. I we know it. That was now, tough. We actually saw that. There's an interesting story to that oh, because we actually saw those tapes for the first time. For the first time when we were shooting, we never wanted to see it before we actually shot those scenes. So, so that set you up for the... Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, in this new arena of challenge and so on, so, uh, this is when the wildest stuff surfaces, I assume. I would call wild stuff the, the tape of the dead woman who's saying, I, you know... Well, she doesn't sit up in the coffin. I mean, that's done. She's buried. She's done. No, you but, sat up in the coffin. But don't you take more risks when you're out there fighting uh, the new... I'm asking. I don't think well, we did as out there. But I, I, I also think that one thing that David and Michael both do is keep us just inside, instead of doing outlandish Moldavia, 
uh, twin sisters and things like that. Yeah, There's absolutely. a reality We're maintained. Constant. It's right. not a fight. Right. Just We're one just... more question this audience wants in this thing. Did I, I, you, you have a woman director often, do you? Or oh, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. All right, but you're saying, yeah, sometimes. No, we are. And now, how about writers? Women writers? One of our well, now, head writers is a woman. Yeah. But why aren't women, why aren't there more women writers? I don't want to turn this into a, con, you know, to a, a political <laughs> event, but I've noticed that most of the writers out here are male. That's fine with me. I, some of my best friends are male. But you, <laughs> but when you consider, this is really a woman's show. Wouldn't you give us that? Well, we have an exact, our executive uh, story editor is a female. She is a female. Uh -huh. You can't get higher than her position as a writer on our show. She and is one of number our one. Producers is a woman also. Uh huh. Lynn Latham, her husband. Uh, Good Lord, there is a dive bomber. Oh yeah. my God! It's over here. Cleveland oh. here. Over here. Look at him. Okay. He's okay. so excited. He wants to see it. You got to take a picture of it, Brian. Can you see it? There it is. <laughs> here it is. Wait a minute. Can you see it? Wait a minute. Pick it up. Here it is. Where is it? What? This? Uh, I'm sorry if you can't see this. This is a bug about as big as a silver dollar. Obviously, uh, obviously he's got a ticket. I, he's from L.A. Law, and he's here to tell us something. We're in Burbank, California with a, uh, a very normal audience and then one very strange member that got in here. And we'll be back with the stars of Nash Landing in just a moment. Yes. Uh, John, I'd like to know if you find it fun to play the villain and the <laughs> knob of the show. The snob? Oh, oh dear! I've never thought of her that way. Yeah, it is. It's it's the most fun I think to play the villain, at least for me. And the, I I think the the really fun thing about Abby is that she's not all bad. So she's not totally you know she's not predictable. Sometimes she does good things, right? Sometimes she doesn't. Uh, Abby, uh, here's Abby uh, meeting her former husband as she's being fitted for her new wedding dress. Incidentally, oh, I seen this it. is a white wedding dress. Why not, Phil? I mean, is that, that's all right. We don't care about that anymore, right? I wore white at my she, real yes. wedding three months ago. That's and right. And it was she your did. first marriage. It no. was not. She had Thank an you very much. Well, it's, it's, it's all right now. We don't it's care about prettier. it. It's prettier. You know what? No, it ha Well, okay. I'm just going to go off Well, but, you know, the topic. idea is... It has to do with your Virginity. Feeling. It's, it's a virgin thought. It's, it's a virgin purity, thought. Virginity of your emotion. Okay. Well, what? You know about this? No, no, no. I was going to ask where they do most of their shooting. Right around down? Oh. Yeah, no, right MGM. around here. Right? Good and good. MGM. At old MGM. Here's, uh, all right, here's, now, here's Gary meeting Abby as she's getting fitted for her dress to marry her new husband. This is, and look at they, how civil they are. Should we all be in this way? Roll the film. Call you back, all right, Phoebe? Yeah, thanks. Does that mean you approve? Yeah, great dress. Mm -hmm. At these prices, this is a gown, not a dress. <laughs> what do you think of the merino plans? Um, I want to spend a little more time looking them over. Well, sure. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take those? I'll have some more copies made. As a matter of fact, I got two more copies made. One for me and one for Karen. Uh, Marsha. What? Uh, get the architect on the phone for me, will you? Sure. Just the R. Okay. All right. Listen, um, I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you. Uh, I do. I hope you'll be very happy. to know a while ago when I was watching that scene, the real emotion in that scene, when you know you have something emotional like that coming along, is it something you have to prepare for or is it all spontaneity? It's all spontaneous with me. I don't prepare for anything. <laughs> <laughs> he does 
doesn't. He doesn't. You don't. That's not true. No, that's true. He he does. Does. That's the way I he work. Doesn't. I show up on time, I say my words, and I go home. That's true. Oh. You don't have to reach down inside to get something. I'm sure, but I, I do it then. I don't something prepare for it. something you feel as you go along. It's something I prepare for three minutes before I do it. Otherwise, right. it gets very old. But, but that's my technique. Everybody works differently. Yeah, all actors do it differently. Some prepare for hours beforehand. Some listen to music. Some, you know, it just, it just yeah. depends on what really does it for you. Yeah, I go behind the set with photographs. I really do. <laughs> she does. She's I really kidding. do. I go behind. Photographs. Photographs. photographs, yeah. Things that either early, uh, photo, if it's something with uh, Gary, something from uh, back on, even on Dallas. I have photos from Dallas. But uh, photos that I take in the, and use to, to evoke a kind of feeling. Yes. That I really, Is it? Are you guys possibly ever going to reunite Valley? No. No. <laughs> On the last episode of Knox Landing that you'll ever see, I am positive, 100% sure, mo. Slow mo. that the audience would lynch us if they didn't see the two of them hook up, right? <laughs> they want it, you mean. What kind of recommendations would you all make to a young person who had an interest in pursuing an acting career? Kevin, sounded like you got some lucky breaks laid on, but for, say, a teenager. Uh, study. Well, study, 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 go to uh, workshops, uh, take it in school, uh, go to New York, make the rounds, bang on doors, know what it's like to feel that rejection, work any way you can, and any And then workshop. be prepared never to work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fine profession. <clears throat> Was there any resistance at all from your own Irish Catholic ambiance? Yeah, my father said, uh, why are you leaving the railroad? You've got to be out of your mind. There's security <laughs> there, you know? Which, which is a fine job, too. I mean, you I actually did punch tickets for the L.I. Uh, railroad. I have five years, uh, my background is five years on railroads. Three in New York with the Long Island Railroad as a trainman. I was just about to be promoted as a conductor in charge of the train. And when I left that to go into acting, my first show was a play called The Impossible Years, where I toured the United States with that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it came, and that was in 1967. In 71, I came to California, and for another job, I went down to the railroads here, and got a job working nights because I knew that my days had to be free for all the work I was going to get. <laughs> so uh, I worked for the Santa Fe Railroad as uh, an apprentice engineer. I ran engines all over L.A. And when I quit that, I was making passenger runs from L.A. to San Diego. And, I mean, it was a, a great time, great experience. And but is this I, one coaching? But I left that railroad to do a play, Streetcar Named Desire. <laughs> And then from that was Kojak, and then it started, and I haven't stopped. Uh, uh, you, and your father was resistant, you say? He wanted to know what... Yeah, world? tied into the security uh, element, and uh, why give up a good thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I was just wondering, when you play the same characters for nine years, um, it must get boring. How do you keep it alive? I mean, how do you keep going with the same characters? That's a long time to play one character. <clears throat> I think the, the easiest thing on our show is because of the other actors. That's exactly right. You know, everybody here is a real professional and really cares about their characters and the show and everything. So we work off of each other. You know, if it, were, if it was just us and we came in and somebody, people just did it by rote, it wouldn't be fun. But everybody gets excited about a scene. We find something to get excited about. Yes, uh, my question is for uh, Michelle Lee. You seem so composed and so calm. Do you practice meditation techniques or um, visualization to get you through some of the things that might be a little bit difficult? Uh, no, although I have, and I, and I do believe that it's a very good practice. I, I don't. It's just my nature. I'd like to ask any members of the cast if they have any problems after they've taped for so long um, going from one life to the other. <laughs> if, if you ever... Uh, do you go back to a normal life? Do you have your friends... It's hard to shake, yeah. You mean take it home with you? Take the, yeah. the part home? See, I think in, in these type of shows, in this profession, everything is so structured, you have a beginning, middle, and end, and the results of which always end up being perfect, no matter what you're doing. Uh, when you break away from that and get back into the reality of what we, the way we live, then you're stuck with uh, everyday problems, and how you adjust to that can be a problem. Uh, this is hardly an original observation, but... Um Elizabeth Taylor, among other people, makes the point that there are a lot of squ screwy actors. I don't, I'm sure she doesn't mean to Not suggest that... No. no. Uh, <laughs> must be talking about someone Well, but else. please understand her point. I don't want to insult her own uh, sensitivity here. It's about being somebody else. There's, you know, you spend a lot of time creating this illusion, and in the process, I'm sure you get paid for somehow running away from yourself. In some, Not everybody does this, but some people do, and... 
And but that, isn't that a wonderful way to be able to get out a lot of things, you know, through another character, through, through the emotions that that character can feel, you then can get rid of a lot of things that you might not want to have in your own life. It works sometimes, yeah. not always. <laughs> I'd like to know if any of you are working on an upcoming movie. I have one coming out that I'm not working on. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have one, I have one that's going to come out, I think, first of April, and I play a madam, a trollop. I've been wanting to play a trollop for a long, long time. I gave her put some on lessons. some of, and Yes, I was going to say, I want to put on some of Abby's eye makeup. I called Donna immediately. I said, I'm playing a hooker. What do I do, Donna? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. I would like to know if Donna Mills is married in real life, and if she's not, do you find it difficult to find dates because of your character that you play? <laughs> My character's always found it very easy to find dates, actually. <laughs> no, I'm not married. And uh, it hasn't been too hard to find dates. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do about Bobby? Bobby Ewing. <laughs> Well, you know, we I'm named him. Yeah, there was a twin. It's not my show. I don't care. <laughs> He's alive, from what I'm, I'm told. Uh, but, but, uh, we named the twin boy after Bobby because he had died, and <laughs> then Bobby, it was just a dream. And so now, it must, well, they, I must have been dreaming because I told Ted that that Bobby had died. So I guess I was dreaming. So too. was I. We're all I named him after Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. How much of the dialogue that's that you have scripted on the show? How much of that is actually memorized? <laughs> We memorize the dialogue, and sometimes we ad lib a little. Actually, it sounds to me like you might have more freedom. No actor has a whole lot of freedom. Even I found that out after doing these interviews. Uh, you are very married to the script. But if anybody has a little tap dancing elbow room, uh, it'd be you guys. That's interesting. On our I guess particular show? It's about, apparently, about your production team. It, it likes to let your string get out a little longer, is that it? I think it's because they trust us. I don't think that they would have allowed us to do it unless they really felt that they could trust the people that they hired in these positions. And, and it was really... I'm sorry, but not every company of actors could do it. You know, I mean, I think that's why they trust us, because there are a lot of companies of actors that couldn't... True. You know, in year but, one, we used to sit around uh, a table at lunchtime and read through together every single script, which is unheard of, for television shows to have a rehearsal read through and during the course of that time sometimes uh, we would ad lib a little or we would talk to them about what was right or wrong with that particular scene <coughs> or script I think what happened then was uh, somehow they saw something and they gained we, they gained confidence in what we could do on our own also yeah. we, uh, I do have to break here but please let me ask you this one more time Given the number of young, beautiful women that come here every day, if not every week, uh, to find their way with their little composite and their pictures and maybe an agent, maybe not, you, uh, at a very young age, may I say, are in a position to offer Thank some... You. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, no. Tell, tell their daughters, what's, what's, what's for women to remember if they, really, if they come out here? I see so many beautiful women sitting around these lovely hotels, <coughs> and it's clear they all want to be in your game. Some of them are, some are not. What are the what are the trap doors here? It doesn't have to do with beautiful woman. It has to do with your talent and your and your abilities and your craft. And that's what you have to have. If they just come and are beautiful and think that that's going to do it, it doesn't. It really it gets, doesn't. The gets them maybe the in the door, door but that's but about it. If yeah. you don't, if you can't create this illusion on the screen, no matter what you look like, that's the end of the game for you. Well, it's inside. I think Holly Hunter is a gorgeous-looking woman, and she's so beautifully gorgeous inside, and she just, it yeah. just, yeah, it just comes from within, and it's just all over the screen. It's wonderful. Yeah. But I want to say, too, that I feel that <clears throat> anywhere and a young actress out here can get on her feet and actually do the work, learn the lines, find out on her feet. I think that is so vital because all the classes in the world won't give you the on-the-job experience if there's yeah. any way to do that. Now, an agent can presumably ruin an otherwise very talented, potentially successful person, I guess, huh? I mean, if he makes wrong decisions, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or she? But basically, that initial start has got to be just get out and say, and take everything, I would say. I mean, initially, because you have to get your momentum going, and then you start to choose, yeah. but you but have to really you have go. To, you have to take uh, responsibility for your own life. You can't say, my agent ruined my career. You know, it's your life. Your agent doesn't uh, rule you. Uh -huh. The final decision is yours. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a 
lot of you have uh, said that with this particular script, with this uh, show that you put on, yes. the, they have allowed you to put yourself more in it or ad lib more. Okay, now back to that other question that I didn't feel was answered. How do you separate, since you're giving yourself now to this particular part, how do you separate yourself from the part when you go home? <laughs> wow. Okay, I, okay think I think it depends on the kind of work you're doing at that particular time. Sometimes our storylines are light and they're not difficult in terms of, emotional. you know, emotional memory and things that you have to conjure up for yourself as an actor. And then there are other times, I know certainly it has happened to me, where you're dealing with something very painful to yourself personally that you're using in a, a, a particular scenes that you're dealing with right then. And then you, it, it might come home with you in the sense of uh, perhaps the, the pressing elements of, of that uh, part of your life. Right. But otherwise, you can separate. Yes. Uh, I had a question. When, when you ch decide to change a hairstyle or something, you know, the president can't change a part without permission. Do you have <laughs> written into your contract <laughs> certain... No, but we've uh, gotten in trouble. No, because also, you know, like an airline store, can yeah. you check in four pounds heavier, or do they give you a certain amount of time before they write you off? I'm what? not allowed to part <laughs> my hair. Over. I can't. Uh, it it's in my contract. Yeah. Uh, well, a few times... Uh, we, I'm no. not making fun of you. I know what you mean. Yeah, it is right. true that no, you okay. can't just... Uh, a few times we've got You couldn't come in as a punker. No, we but can't. I, I did it. I did it last year. Okay, and this is... If some of you saw the uh, end of last season where I was kidnapped by the uh, uh, kidnapper. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> I was up in this room and he made me cut my hair. Did you see that? Where I was cutting my hair. That hair was actually a wig because Michelle had cut her own hair and my, at my, I had cut my own hair over hiatus and came back to work from long hair to short hair and they looked at me and said, oh my God. So we put on a wig and then we cut my wig. And then Donna went between seasons with a That's a, a right. Short, with short, short hair and, and they, I didn't know they were going to pick up exactly where they left off the season before. So I was being driven away in a limo with long hair and the next season they picked up with me driving away in the same limo with short hair. <laughs> put a hair up this year. The car. I, I figured wanna... they tortured me by cutting off my hair. But we have, have what? Do you have weight restrictions you have to stay within? No, 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 no. You know that by looking. You know. Well, <laughs> when you can't fit in your costume. That's, that's right. You can't button the waist. I want to show up, Ted. Ted, listen, they'll never hmm? accuse you of talking too much. <laughs> um, okay, you know that Ted, uh, and you're, you're, uh, Abby. Valley. Uh, Valley. Abby. I'm sorry, I mean, that's Abby. Yes. Uh, but you guys separated, and then you slept together. Ooh, it's the most no. fun that way. No. I mean, you're either oh. separated oh. or you're no, not. No, we didn't. We kissed. But that is not what you're saying in this Vince, scene. You yeah, These well, are your kids. We kissed, and then a month later, I'm That's, in the doctor's I've office, never, and he tells me I'm going to have twins. But I've never seen a speech that includes so much uh, plot, and you really care. Exposition, man. Exposition. Soap opera. <laughs> Listen to this. And that's my, because mine are my children, and we were separated, and then we were back, and these are my kids, and I know they are, and you don't let me see them, and this is the lousy. <laughs> roll of film. Watch Ted Shackelford at work here. Roll the film. Not slam. <laughs> you have absolutely no sense of responsibility. Lay the hell off. You lay off. They called you daddy. So Did you hear what? that? They're confused. That's what. And I'm, I'm totally confused, and I'm not going to let you do this to us. Uh -huh. Well, you hold all the cards, don't you? Hmm? You tell me when I can see them, how I can see them, what I'm supposed to say to them, what I can feed them. You're lucky that I let you see them. Lucky? Yes. I don't feel lucky. I feel like some jerk who's been run over by a truck with you as the driver. You tell me where I'm lucky. There are other divorced couples who manage to work it out with their kids. Why the hell can't we? Because... Because if I can't trust you in my life, why in the world should I trust you to be in my children's? They're mine, too. Shh. What? I don't want you to... Stop that. I never wanted to hear you say that. Oh, great. You don't want them to know I'm their father. No, I don't, but because you're not. Well, you never gave me a chance, did you? What the hell am I supposed to be? Shh. This is the uncleanest break in the history of marriage. You know that? We got divorced. Then we jumped back into bed together for one last time. Not such a big deal, but you got pregnant, and you never told me about it. Maybe, just maybe, we would have gotten married again if I'd known about it, but we'll never know because you never gave me a chance. Great, so I marry Abby. I've got a wonderful life. I don't know anything. Then I begin to suspect that the kids are mine. What can I do about it? Nothing, because you're married, and you won't tell me a damn thing. So i got to find out on my own. Thank you. Thank you so much for trusting me. Why should I trust you? Why would I trust you? You're the most undependable person that I've ever known. Yeah, and you never say or do anything the same way twice. 
You're the one who's undependable. Why should I trust what you say, huh? You lied for me for years about the kids. I never know what you're going to say or do. I don't think you know what you're going to say from one minute to the next. You say you're confused? Yes. Great. Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm not confused about. What? And that's that I'm their father. Chuck Broden's oh. mother. Oh! You wear your own clothes, or do you have to wear the clothes they give you? You ever take those clothes home? Oh, on the show? oh you caught us all <laughs> the time. Oh. You do. You can? Yeah, we, we no. Wardrobe doesn't have a number on every item? They do. Absolutely. They keep what their a practical eyes. question. We borrow them sometimes. <laughs> well, we, we might expect that from the uh, mother of an actor, yes. Uh, Donna, I know you studied ballet for many years. Are mm -hmm. you happy the way your life turned out? Yes, yes. I think I'm happier today than I would have been had I been a dancer. Yes. Hi, it seems like you all get along so well. After working hours, do you all socialize? No, that's why we get along so well. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, in taping, how many hours do you work a day when you're taping? Yeah. Show? What to what? Twelve, Twelve hours. Twelve. Sir. Seven to seven. Mm -hmm. Not much time. <laughs> the I mean, it's been on for nine years in acting. Service is provided and promotional fees paid by the ending. following. At Volvo, we've been safety testing our cars almost as long as we've been building them. Because we want to make sure our customers keep coming back. You can beautify and protect metal surfaces with quality True Test XO Rust Red Metal Primer, aluminum paint, and gloss enamel from True Value Hardware Stores. Stay tuned for our magazine coming up next here on WJAR Channel 10.